Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast. My hype. This is episode 139. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am hype. That's H Y N P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guests is in the building today. Episode 139. My guys, reintroduce yourself to the audience. It's been a while. This is Uncle B. Going for the podcast. Go ahead. Come on now, Silas. This man from the Bridge of the Gap podcast. Let's go. Come on, we gotta get together, fellas. Let's go. Hey, what's up? You know what it is. It's on the face. Uh the vibe provider, the mood setter, you know, the uh the most unique, rawless podcast you might ever want to meet from the Bridge the Gap podcast. Welcome to Hi, thank you for having us, brother. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having yeah, this us. Nigga- this my nigga guy right there. Storm. Hey, y'all, did y'all hear him go quiet storm? Uh, Tony Brown, turn it on, turn it on on us. Yes, that's my guy right here. That's my guy. He tried, he tried, he tried to snap out of it. He tried, he tried, he tried to get the rust off. We're shaking the rust off. Today. Yeah, they, you know, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Thank you for having us, bro. Thank you. All for right. Having. So, if you're new to the program, we appreciate you hitting the button. We only accept five stars on How to Hustle podcast. We're hiding now four. Oh. Not even three. Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whichever joint you on, or however you're listening. We only accept five stars, and we appreciate you hitting the button. Now, if you've been listening to me or you know me, uh, these here are my guys. These are my guys for years. Slid in their DMs years ago, you know, uh, and told oh, them we do this live show. Right, listen, oh. if you know me, you, if you know me, nothing that I'm saying oh. needs to be said like that because we know that oh. I ain't going to take time. So <laughs> we ain't even going in here. <laughs> I've told these niggas, yo, we're doing a live show. Y'all niggas slide down at the joint. And they've been love ever since. So now these guys have been a little rusty. They've been BSing to get back in the studio. So this is what we're doing today. We're shining a spotlight on the BTG podcast, on the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This right here is because we're what the game's been missing. We need these guys out here. We need you providing that content and giving us those different perspectives from the three different generations of the situation. Because I don't face has some, His face has something to say. His face got a little gray in his joint now in case y'all on the audio. You know what I'm saying? Things and changed around here, B. Got Damn. old, old. <laughs> life kick, life kicking my ass. Mm-hmm. Shouts out to my man now. Life be lifing. Um, yes. Sir. So, all right, now this is what we're going to do. Because these guys, like I said, have been a while since they did a podcast. So, what we're going to start off here with this episode is what's that topic oh. that you've been itching to do? Big oh. Dan, we're going to start with you. You got the loudest voice of the crew. What is the topic you've been itching to do, Dan? Talk to me. Man, why you go straight to me? You was supposed to go, you was supposed to go around the room and let it simmer. But <laughs> since you're going to come to me, we started, with, then, we started around the room right? with you, big fella. Come on, you pay it. Hold up. First of all, all right, you, pay, um, you pay it talent, baby. You're a How to Hustle podcast. I'm ready. Uh, you're a How to Hustle live show veteran. So, you so know what's the topic that I've been wanting to talk about? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. So, and this this might ruffle a couple feathers, but it is what it is. Um. Oh, shit. Why is it that? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, why is it that um, all the Muslim brothers is only Muslim brothers doing Ra- Ramadan? Because I swear to God, the whole fucking city, city of Philadelphia, is, is shooters and killers and drug dealers until Ramadan hit. Uh, then everybody on their thing. Please, everybody got family members that's on that walk of life. Uh, you know, I I just want to know what's what's how, what's up with that. Like, talk to me. You know, I don't nobody. Yeah, what's up? We ain't potted in a while, so let's go. No, nah. I'm so, starting I mean, hot, I, hot shit. Let's go. That's that's not hot at all. I can answer that one for you because you know I'm a lifetime Muslim. Um, I know, and, that, and it don't apply to you because you. I always no, see you, not, on your, on your, on your, you. You know what I mean? But I need what? to. I need to know what's going on. Well, no, nah, that's that's why. I, I ain't, that's why I ain't even take it like you said. This might ruffle. I, we not. Ruffle I know it. a nigga I, that no, cut off. I know a nigga original BTG nigga shit. Cut off kings. I know a nigga <laughs> that sell all the drugs in the world. Right. I told this nigga, hey yo, Cat Williams is coming on April seventh. He said, nah, bro, I can't do that. That's Ramadan, nigga. You just sold all the drugs. But now right, we so- can't take Cat Williams. 
because you want because it's Ramadan. So I'm, I'm sorry. That's 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 hypocritical to me. That's some nah, hypocritical I'm a, shit. I'm a I'm gonna give it to you. It's absolutely hypocritical. If, see, my whole problem with people is if you say you something, then you gotta stand on that. You don't stand on that for mm -hmm. 30 days, and you don't stand on that for a couple of months. If that's what it is, that's what it is. If you say I'm a Muslim, then you got to stand on that. If you say I'm a Christian, you got to stand on that. You're Jewish or whatever your situation is. You have to stand on all the things that you've agreed to believe in and following when you say that you're going to be these things. Now, for the person who does these things during Ramadan, the best time for you to do any of these things is Ramadan. The most beneficial blessings that you're going to get out of it is during Ramadan. So you would be a fool to turn it down during Ramadan. You're a fool to turn it down for the other 11 months of the year, too. But if, if if at any time you're going to be on it, this needs to be when you're on it. Now, why people do that, I can't, why, I can't, I can't speak for why people hit the on off switch because I'm not one of them on off switch kind of guys. All my episodes it's, get scheduled it's, it's around the times it makes a lot. Uh -oh. It's a lot. It's a lot of sisters that I be seeing only time, they, only time they, you know, they keep Mars on is when their hair not done. Like I don't get it. As soon as they, I mean, as soon as they get a fresh situation, now they back out here. They for the streets again. So a joint Get wild, like that. man. All right, so a joint like that, I can even give you this. My mom been Muslim since the sixties. The only time she got on the key is when it's time to mix a lot. Uh, okay. I wore my I wore a kufi for the first time in like twenty five years uh, at the end of this year. None of those right. things are the things that make you believe anything. Those are just especially now because you know how the city is. The whole day at the end, our your whole timeline is just people in guard. And if you have no belief in your system and you just got on the outfit, you just got on the outfit. So my, somebody can like the whole somebody, city, the whole city, dog. It's the whole city, though. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, you, it's also the social media effect of everything. If all your timeline is everybody's going this way, then that's what you start to gravitate toward. Not that you believe in any of this. It's just that's, where everybody's going to be at for the day. So, so can I chime in on this? Mm -hmm. Let's go, bro. Right, so my same question. Same question you asked him. Um, my whole question is, we are we are a Philadelphia city ran by Muslims. Can you agree by that? Like there's more Muslims in this city than them there anywhere else, right? That's what that's what it looked like. Shit. I ain't, I ain't gonna say that like anywhere else. But I'm just, I'm just saying, saying everybody it seemed like the majority, the majority of the city to me. The majority of the city yeah, is it's Muslim. definitely it's not like this everywhere. Muslims. Y'all are the strongest religion in the city of Philadelphia strongest i'm trying to figure out why these guys why the old heads can't keep i'm from i'm from an era where the old heads kept me in line you got me they saw me doing something wrong or about to go do something wrong they would check me you feel me where the old heads at man with these guys with these young bucks man with these guns but what i'm saying this, understand what i'm saying why we don't have, why they're not sitting down with their young Muslim brothers and showing them, put these guns down. Y'all, they're the only ones that really can stop it, the older Muslims. In my eyes, I'm not saying it's true, but in my eyes, it's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? So, y'all got to have some, y'all the strongest religion around. Y'all the strongest so in the city. His, the, 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 history, the history of your city will teach you, it's all about your old heads. Just because you got older, right. I mean that you're somebody's old head. People have been put in positions that they're just not equipped for. Just because you keep getting older, if you get no more mature, if you don't learn any damn thing, you just keep having birthdays. That's just what's going to keep happening every time April rolls around, because that's when your birthday hit. But mm -hmm. hold up. I got your face. I got you. I got you. I'm going to get it to you. Uh, the history of your city, though, when Islam first comes into your city in the 60s, the strongness of the brotherhood and the respect level, all of that was the Muslims was you're not doing it's Friday. We're going to Juma. Everybody's going. If you from wherever, like, again, if you say that this is what you is and you got to stand on that, you can't just stand on it in jail. You can't just stand on it when it's convenient for you. Niggas is coming to your crib looking for you like, yo, why wasn't you at Juma today? Something better be wrong. But hey. we don't have them type situations no more because that's not how people carrying it now. Oh. People have gotten so broken up and just to thinking that we so important that we lost sight of the community as far as everything nobody looks at everything is like how can we grow our community how do we build our situation everybody looks at how can i grow my situation and also the same thing like what dan took it with the uh people do it when it's convenient situation we could do the same thing like on christmas everybody got the matching pajama photos but how many of these niggas been to church like mm -hmm. same situation that's why i got a problem with anybody who says they're anything and they don't stand on that go ahead face 
Well, I, I just wanted to kind of like lighten the mood and give you some trivia about one of my podcast members. And I just wanted you to just <clears throat> take a, a guess on who that podcast member might be. <laughs> um, one of one. Are of we the, changing the topic right now? No, it's in. It's in. Come on, walk with me. It's in the religion of. I'm okay. sorry. It's in the area of religion, and it's a trivia question about one of my podcast members. So you ready? Come on. So one of one of my podcast members, the BGT podcast, is I call it um, blessed blessed on both sides of management. And what I mean by that is uh, he's baptized and he has his shahada. And I want you to figure out which one of my podcast members is that pure that they're, you know, they have that double. Uh, Wham. That double. All right. So I, I can tell who it is because we have, you know what I'm saying, a certain reaction from a certain individual. Although I have had a religious conversation with one of the members of the BCG podcast. But I'm going to assume that that would be Dan that we're speaking of. Yeah, man. the brother out there at the lakefront property, copy that. So you know what I'm saying? He's the Ramadan, tree, he's the Ramadan, and then he got his mansion pajamas. Is that what you said? <laughs> that don't block my blessings, brother. Copy that. You know? a, I'll do a side block on that. Blessings, brother. I'd rather you believe in something than you don't believe in nothing, bro. Go ahead, Pete. I mean, he was a, you about to that was it. Uh, was... and, then, and then I'm sorry, and then I got one more to just like that that boo too. So it's like when it comes to like. Like Dan said, like people that may be something and then they change. It's kind of like if you had the same management has been handling things correctly for 30, 40 fucking years, right? Why, whatever age you think you want to change or transition into a different religion, why, why would you want to change management? It, it's like if management, whoever you who's hand, been handling shit, has been handling shit for 25, 30 years. Why would you want to... Just because you've been doing yo, something for 25, 30 years. Podcast, oh, mute, that. Mute, mute that. Mute that, don't. Just because you've been doing something for 25, 30 years don't mean that you was doing it right. You could have finally realized at year 26 that, damn, I've been doing this thing wrong the whole way. I believe you was coming to this conclusion on something right. back when, you, you know, back when y'all used to do podcasts. You were coming to this conclusion of the show that like a lot of these things that I came up with just wasn't maybe the way that I was supposed to be going. This is one thing that I loved about listening to y'all every week because I heard the evolution of you uh, mm -hmm. through the listening through the years of like you slowly starting to get to like, damn, maybe I was wrong about this, that or whatever. That happens yeah. when somebody's trying to grow. Just because though, like you could have been a you could have been a Muslim for sixty years and then thought that or, Christianity was the way to go. You could have been hey, a Christian for sixty years and then thought, man, Islam is the way to go. You know, things happen or, when they happen. Go right. right or he could have, or he could have went to jail for two weeks and just converted. Could be, you know. <laughs> He's gonna take you know my mean? soups if Bob, I you was only in right. jail for two weeks, Bob. God damn, you couldn't stall him out. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Hey man, listen. All right. I did a year. They right, when man. I walked out of there, I I Come on, Aubrey. I, I, I which, took my shot of wild and you want to talk about? What's the what's right, the right, of, topic that's burning your soul? Listen to this. Yeah, I took about my shot of while I was in jail. The reason why I took my shot when I was in jail is, is because of the fact that. Huh? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let, let my y'all do this to Unk all the time. Unk, we try and get his points off, and y'all jump all over my man. Let right. my man get his off. I got you. Though. My man, the Unk reason why <laughs> the reason, true story, the reason why I took my shahada in jail is because when I seen what they was doing, everybody was all together as one, praying together, eating together. You know what I mean? And I felt I want to be a part of that, right? But as I was learning, I had people in my ear telling me, don't do this, don't do that. Whatever you read, you held accountable for, so slow down. You know what I mean? And then I, when I get out of jail, I see the way they was moving, and I just didn't like that. It was a different type of brother. It, they, 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 it was different. You know what I mean? So I kind of like like fell, back off. Like I kinda like fell though, back off of it. It's like anything. You got to find out which situation works for you. Just because the people, I thought it was good in the beginning. No, I'm I really talking about, thought it was good. 
what I'm saying is like, they're just like from jail, we went right to the old country buffet and you got fucking pork chops. What are you talking about? I don't even eat oh, pork wow. chops. Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out, bro. Come on. All right. Come on, Oaks. Let's go. Um, what's the topic that you've been itching on? Um, Gun violence, man. I'm big on gun <laughs> violence, man. Um, oh, this boy, Potton. Yeah, I'm really good big on gun violence. Oh, Let me, oh, another two stories. So I want to I went to, I was at Broad Neary the other day, man, actually yesterday. And uh, what you call them? The apostles was out there. What do they call? The the dude, apostles. Dude with the, the What's dude, the boy? The, the, Israelites. On, the Israelites. The Israelites out there. So one boy trying to sell him something, the Israelites something. And he like, cuz, you can't tell me nothing about what's going on. The boy had a whole bottle in his back pocket. You drunk. Like that, that was like a slap. Like it was like ball really telling the truth how we really are. Everybody just want to get high. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, I'm yeah. not that type of person right there. I did get on. Well, what's was, that got to do with gun violence? Yeah, I'm gonna say you said gun violence. Yeah, well, I did say what's gun that violence. Do with gun I just to get that Israelite yeah, shit copy. out of the way. But yeah, but gun violence that was my topic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I do got an 18 year old out there. You know what I mean? And and I'm gr- and I'm trying to and I got a 14 year old coming up. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying my best to keep them tight. When that shit went down and Cecil B. Moore, he was with me. My oldest one works at Panda, so you know what I mean. He was with me, and they they just out of control, cuz it's just out of control, and I don't understand. You know what I mean? How this shit is going down? Somebody gonna get hurt? You know what I mean? And it's just hard because the the way I grew up, I couldn't leave. It was certain people's houses I wasn't supposed to go past. You understand what I'm saying? And you got kids running around here in the oh. streets killing each other, man, over something stupid, man. We ain't even get Dane doing that shit over money. You know what I mean? So, so, face, so go ahead. I'm about to say face. You jump in I, on that one. Sorry, uh, we ain't pod in almost a year and a half. Right. And that's what you want to talk to us about? We know it's crazy, well, y'all. But I mean, well, let's talk about it. What you think? You got a son growing uh, up too. Everybody can't move their kids to Jersey. See, you see, but... that's what I'm saying. You gotta, you gotta. I'm what out here. Hate? You know what I'm saying? That, that was it, bro. That was it. Y'all hating. I love this guy. That was it. That was listen, <laughs> mind you, listen. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, face. He wants to go to the park up the street to play basketball. Right. Can't really even let him go to the park to play basketball. Well, people come unfortunately, home. unfortunately, certain sections of the city of Philadelphia. What are section? Not safe, I'm in the Northeast. Are not safe for young children to play. Now, what, what you do? What sections is? What, hey, let, go listen. Ahead. Let you talk. We're going to talk about gun violence. Let me talk. At some point, you have to learn how to pivot and expose your kids to different things, activities, different areas, shit like that. You got to bring them out the environments that you know the gun violence is in. You can't reach every kid. So what you got to do is you got to take yours or whoever you care about your loved ones out of certain situations. The gun the gun violence, problem, gun violence problem right now is far more than the three of us sitting here talking about can do. But we can All work right, with so it. We, hold up, it because... We really, we, we really want to get involved, but it's like it's, it's bad to the fact that it's kids out here well. It's kids out here that really had no guidance, and that's that was going hold to be up, hold up because I, let's not get I, let's not bog down the conversation as far as though as uh, this is this is the problem we got right here is the conversation that we having we're bogging this conversation down to our individual situations. The gun violence problem in the city is not about our individual situations; it's about the whole of the community. It's not right. about how do I protect mine because if something happening, it's going to happen. You could be right. Jersey, Baltimore, DC, don't right. matter. If something happening is going to happen. It ain't no place where niggas ain't shooting guns. Now, it's less likely to happen in certain situations, but the gun violence joint is not how do I just protect my kids. It's how do I stop the little nigga across the street, little nigga around the corner. How do you stop all these different situations? Like Face is saying, though, you can't focus on the whole community. You got to focus on these one or two young boys who you have an influence over, whether that's your nephew, your neighbor, your son, whoever, your daughter, because girls is getting hit, too. So yeah, 
it's all about again old heads. It's all, like when Onk is talking about is when I was growing up, trouble is happening over there, and as long as you stay from over there, you're not going to get into these troubles. That's situations. correct. That's it's correct. It's cool for the kids to walk down this block because everybody knows the kids are going to school down here. The kids are going to school around this one. Nothing's happening on these two situations. Right. We got to again a situation where nobody thinks about community. Nobody thinks about how do we protect us instead of just man. I got to take care of me and mine. That's how we got these all, all these bad type situations. Correct. Dan. In my opinion, no, in my opinion, like, come on, Dan, you act, you act. See, you say, yeah, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, you, Dan, you, you, you playing Look. guitar hero? Restart that. No, thing. I got you. You're giving, you giving us a little guitar hero. <laughs> I got you. Oh, when you was coming up, when I was coming up, when all of us was coming up. At that time, it might have been one nigga in every crew that had a gun. Now, right. every young boy out here got a switch. You know what I'm saying? The the guns is too... Making guns off of fucking 3D printers, and I've seen these young boys do it. They're making guns off the 3D printers. They they it, it, they smart. <laughs> like, they... It, it, but it's still... Ties goes back to it's nobody out here, no old heads out here that's stepping up and saying, yo, young boy, throw the fuck out. Yeah. These young boys, they don't respect it. Like, they don't respect nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it ain't like it's fucking a bunch of grown men having shootouts. These is kids out here killing each other. It's 13, 14, 15 year olds out here with fucking switches and they switch cheese and everything. So at some point, Somebody got to reach that young boy at fucking 10, 11 and show them something different. Social media is a big problem, in my opinion, that contributes to all this shit. Because you want everybody on social media holding the switch up, holding their shit. So here's the thing. If me and you got a problem and I see you on social media holding the gun up, I'm not coming going to come and fight you. I got to come shoot you now. We didn't have that. Back in the day, we didn't know what, when I walked, when we was going to fight a nigga, we was hoping that we was the worst the nigga might pull a knife out. Nowadays, all these young niggas got guns. Nobody, and you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's, it's I, bad out here. Can I, can I say something? Go ahead. It's so bad. And oh, this, this to kind of like piggyback off what you said about me being um where I'm at, I mm -hmm. could probably uh knowing a couple couple of the kids around the neighborhood or just like hearing stories from other dads up here. Uh -huh. The gun problem is here too. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's everywhere probably. Yeah. That's why I said it. It ain't no it don't got no zip code. Yeah. <laughs> wherever it is, wherever it is in the black community it, it's a, it, I don't know how I don't know how it's happening, but it just seemed like all these guns is making their way there. Back in the oh, day, yeah. it was drugs that was making our way into, 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 into the community. Come on, bro. You know why. That's about, like, if you really, if you really want me to take it there, I'm sorry. I don't believe that all these fucking guns and switches is just mysteriously popping up in the hands of all these young boys in the mm -hmm. hood, dog. Somebody is bringing these fucking guns in, dog. This is another thing, though, too. This is what I always say about us. Our generation of parents suck. Because like you saying, we're talking 15, 13, like 16. Where's your mom at? Where's your dad at? You can't be work, you can't be working this hard that you ain't got no idea know. what your kids is doing. You're not up you, on your kids at 13. Your kids is just allowed to be outside doing whatever. Like do you, you know be, my we always gotta look at the parents in them situations. We gotta blame ourselves. Like I said, right. I just I don't wanna put that on everybody else. It's our generation of parents that suck at that. Oh. Go ahead. Oh. Do you know? My son came home and showed me a video of these girls jumping this one girl and her grandmom came out. The girl was getting beat up. Her grandmom came out to stop it. And these girls jumped her fucking grandma. Yeah. Like how yeah, how can you do that? I believe it. You I got, thought it was you upset with him. Nigga, why you ain't break that shit up? Because you wasn't taught respect. But, wasn't taught, but, that's the, but the thing is, that, that generation is trained to pull that up 
post that video. So now my entire family is being laughed at online. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go shoot some shit up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, come on, Face. What you got for me? What's your topic? So my... Light the mood up, nigga. <laughs> Lighten the mood up, face. Come on. Yeah, I ain't been drinking, so light the mood up. <laughs> no, I, I was going to go serious. I don't really have nothing simple or goofy to say. I was going to go serious and kind of like piggyback off of all this. And um, I don't know if I'm going to say this right or come out right, but the three of y'all can probably like put it together. Mm -hmm. And I want a genuine response from this. Um, the stigma around therapy and me mental health in our community. Dan, go first on that one. Day. In fact, oh, all right, go go ahead. My go boy, ahead. You go you hey listen, go my ahead. boy is my boy is growing. <laughs> my man is growing, dog. Um, man, I'm proud so of you, dog. If, if if I want to talk to three older, younger black men that's going through this transition, like Uncle's talking about, the crazy shit that's going on and everything else. I want to kind of like talk about like why, even still with all this shit going on, how the world is, AIDS eight dollars and shit like that, gas five dollars. Like the stigma around mental health and therapy in our community. I don't know if I'm saying it, but that's what I want to talk about. What do you want to talk about? What you want to say? So go, yeah. So go ahead, talk about it. And we'll switch it. What do you think? The mental health. I think that mental health issues or mental health and therapy in our community is looked at as never being like a real serious thing ever. And 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 one out of five households, I don't think people take it serious. That was well, serious as they should. And why and, and even as far as I can remember as a kid, that wasn't really something that people in or around my family actually I actually saw, I saw everything but that. And then you grow up, then you, you kind of like see all this crazy shit going on in the world, right? Your kids, kids are shooting kids, they're, like you said, creating guns and all like, and nobody says like, what's the fucking problem? What's the problem? What type of mental health are you talking about though? Because there's multiple types of uh -huh. mental health. Yes. Mental, there's multiple types of mental health issues in the black community that we just breathe over and we do not talk about. So you have to really break it down into what type are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Are you talking about just like black male trauma? Are you talking about fucking how fucking ADHD and all this shit is placed on our kids when it really ain't that it really ain't such like what type of mental health are we talking about here so I can know what realm to go into? Talk, we talking uh about talking about the niggas popping 30s and getting in dumb shit and now they got mental health problems. No, I I think I want to talk about the the ADHD shit with the doctors and all that pushing the medication on certain kids at different age levels that I think is creating a lot of the issues. Then there's also childhood trauma that leads into adult trauma that's why certain men don't function well. Don't. Okay, so let's just let's just let's just put it, let's generalize it in all this, but in the black community, let's just generalize it and say that we don't really talk about actual mental health in our community. As far as okay, as far as I know now from watching documentaries and hearing people talk and listen to shit that I did. When I was younger, I well, even now, I have ADHD. <laughs> when they would say ADHD, and if I went to a doctor and told them some of the shit that pops up in my head daily, they would tr probably try to put me on medicine. No, I'm not doing that, though. When I know that I can just refocus and, you know what I'm saying, you're not gonna have me walking around looking like a fucking zombie. I don't believe in that type of shit. I believe if I was the talk to a fucking doctor about the way that my son zooms around all the fucking place and you know what I'm saying is everything is a fidget and this day and the third they would probably tell me I should put my son on some type of medicine I'm not for that your thoughts go ahead on. Uh, well my son was like that his mother put him on that shit and he was a total <laughs> different person that I didn't like like you know what I mean he was too quiet he was the opposite of what he is Took his whole personality away, right? 
his personality had changed. Like I put, she she takes him to school. Um, but see, here's the thing. Ever since ever since he was young, young, like when he came home with homework, he could never sit still to do the homework. So what I had, of course, you know, nobody believed that he had a problem. I knew he had a problem. So we did physical homework. Like, you know, when we when we do our math, we have to stop his feet, do jumping jacks because he couldn't sit there and pay attention because his legs was always moving. Right. So we did that. We went through that. Then eventually, as he got a little older, they wound up putting him on it because he couldn't sit in class. So once again, I figured something else out. He get three bathroom breaks. When you feel like you got that shit coming on, raise your hand, go to the bathroom, wash your face, get that shit out of you, and go back in the classroom. His teacher know he can only do that three times a day. So after still, they finally gave him the shit. And, um, yeah, he was just totally different. He was just totally different. Um, like, you could see it. You could tell. It looked like mm-hmm. he hot. So now you got to make a decision. Now let you got to make a decision as a parent. Huh? Oh, let me, go ahead. Let me ask y'all a question. Let's say you are a 20-year-old, 25-year-old, and you're having a hard time, and you go to your oldest uncle, and you say, yo, I think, I'm, I, think I want to go to therapy, uncle. How do you think that conversation going to go? Hold up. Hold, kind of therapy? hold up. Hold up. Right. Let me in right here. <clears throat> so... I'm about to say, yeah, because let me let me stay on track and then I'll lead you there. Um, I think the problem with the mental health situation is, like Dan said, it's a blanket statement. You kind of roll everything up into mental health and we can't really decipher what that is. So whenever people have a situation, you can easily just say you have the crutch of, oh, now I'm having a mental, a mental breakdown. I'm having this or I'm having that. When there's no way for us really to break that down and say, is that true or is it not true? Now, that like Uncle mm-hmm. saying where you notice the ADHD situation where his legs is always moving. He's always fidgeting. He's overactive. He's always like his mind can't cut, slow down. Those are the type of situations that we need to attack. The, our problem with these joints is everybody don't want to be told something's wrong with your child. And the yeah. hardest thing for you to hear is my three-year-old has an issue. And it's going to be a little harder for me to parent this situation. Because parenting is already hard enough. Now you're going to throw something else on top of it. Now, like I just said, now you throw some medicine in it and it changes his whole personality. So you got to do your homework on this medicine. You can't just listen to motherfuckers and take anything. You got to right. read these things mm-hmm. see what's the side effects, what's going to be the effects of all of this. Because some people really have a real problem. And the problem with these right. situations is like the boy who cried wolf. The person who's really having a problem and the person who's just like, I don't want to do homework. Nigga, I never wanted to do no homework. Every night I came home, I was like, I this. I'm going to BS around. I know my mom got to cook this dinner and eventually we're going to be able to slide out of this. And eventually we're going to sit here for three, four hours on the stood. Me and my daughter go through the same thing. I tell her all the time, you just 1998 me. You're trying to do what I did then and you can't pull it on me because I know it. So like, the thing though, like there is, we just have to accept that these are the situations. You got to decipher. You got to be a parent. You got to be there to walk through all of these different situations with them so that you know what it is and what's the difference and what are we trying to tackle. You trying to tackle ADHD with somebody who's just lazy. Like, right. So right. you gotta make sure that you're parenting these situations. You're around and you're present. And you're not trying to work triples every day so that you can buy them the latest whatever and they don't give a fuck because they're really struggling with something. Now right. mm-hmm. you just said as far as the therapy situation, therapy is just a lack of education for our situation. We've sure. always been told that it's just something that you don't do. We always, as all of us grew up, if somebody told you, yo, man, you're supposed to suck that up. You're supposed to bottle that up. And then when you continue to suck things up and bottle it up, you have no outlet for it. Eventually, it festers into a problem. That problem could have festered into you overeating, and now your ass has high blood pressure. Now your ass has these 300-pound ankles that we've been talking about forever. <laughs> now your ass just doesn't know how to communicate. You don't know how to hold a conversation with a woman. You don't know how to be a parent. Just because you got four kids don't mean you know how to be a parent. It just means you know how to have sex without a condom. So we got to continue to reevaluate these situations and continue to not think that you're a complete product. It don't matter how old you is, you can always learn shit. Just like we just talked about earlier, you could have did something for 25 or 30 years and realized, oh shit, this was wrong. I was doing this shit left-handed the whole time and I should have been doing it right-handed. But we mm-hmm. all can't think that we're so special that shit can't be wrong with us. There's something wrong with everybody. Like, mm-hmm. it's just different extremes and different mm-hmm. levels of what the shit that is wrong with you. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, what's ahead, your thoughts on therapy? What? What's, what's your, your thoughts, thoughts on therapy? therapy? What kind of therapy for mental health? Yeah, well, nigga, therapy. not rehabilitation, nigga. I mean, oh, mental therapy, health therapy. Hold, so, up, hold, so, up. hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Because therapy could just be you ain't got nobody to talk to. Like your therapy situation could say. just be my brain is overactive and I just need somebody. Okay. Let me change it. The data. Let, listen, what, what do you think about getting what they call professional help therapy? Speaking to a, a stranger. Because you think that they're going to give you some type of an unbiased opinion. What are your thoughts on professional therapy? Oh, I don't. I, I can. I could do that on my own. I don't want to. <laughs> you understand? What I'm saying. I mean, if I feel like if I don't have, if I can't answer his questions, you know what I mean. Then I'll reach out. But if I can't, if I can, um. If I can't answer his questions and I feel like he really, really is a really problem, like she got to go through me first. We got to sit down and talk, have this conversation first. And then if if I feel like I can't answer it, then I will go to get professional help. You know what I mean? But right now, since like he told me one day, he just didn't want to do it no more. He don't want to take it no more. Like he knows the difference between before and after. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We, I think hype meant to, like, I think he meant, like, how do you, I mean, Dan meant, how do you feel about going to therapy to talk to somebody? Not oh, the, me. Yes, well, you. And, and, what are you just in general? What are your thoughts? Do you believe in it? Do you not believe in it? No, because I got, I got family. I got, I got Bub. I got, I got Faith. This is, I don't need, I, I don't need to. Quick. Let me jump in real quick. Go ahead, go ahead. Therapy ain't got to be at an office with somebody that has a degree. Right. Me, and you have exactly. had me and you have had conversations where it was like, hey, yo, hey, hype, I've been thinking about this, or I've been balancing this, or I'm trying to figure out this. Your therapy situation, again, because some people don't have nobody to talk to. Some people can't pick up the phone and say, hey, big fella, I need to holler at you about this, that, or whatever. Yo, cuz, mm -hmm. I need to talk to you about... Some people don't have that sounding board, yeah. that outlet but, to get it. So, yeah, that that's can be that's somebody's like, therapy situation. If, if you, some people don't got no father figures, no positive males, no yeah. positive females. Some people are in real bad situations, and they just yeah. don't have nobody to talk to. Or like you said, somebody's brain is just moving a thousand miles. Like their brain is just moving so fast that they can't slow down the, the they can't slow down to put it all together. Mm -hmm. I think that's a thing that face does. <laughs> so you can't. His head is going in so many different places, but he has Dan to say, hey. What do you think about this, 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 and this? And then he can make it make sense for him. So right. I want, hold on, I want to say this. So this is my analogy of this. And I tell Dan this all the time. I look at your brain and everything, all of this as a computer. You got to release the data. However that looks for you, you got to release the data, whether it's fishing, Legos, planting, playing ball, exercising, reading, yoga. You got to release the data. If you don't have anybody to talk to, you feel like oh, maybe about therapy or don't have nobody to talk to, you got to release the fucking data. And that's well, however that looks like for you. But that's my therapy for people that don't like therapy. Because I believe in therapy, but I never sat down and spoke to a therapist ever. So, so ever. why? Hold on, let me go. Why? Because fortunately, I got people, and I do research, and I have mentors. I have other things, and I got, and I got hobbies, and I release data. So I'm sure, but I don't ever think that I would sit in front of somebody that may not come from my walk of life or have grew up the way that I grew up to tell me how I should be operating, pivoting, and moving. I would rather... Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish, finish what you're saying. You would rather... I would rather have, have mentors that come from maybe the same walk of life, grew up how I grew up, or family members that may give me an opinion from a non non-biased point of view or... Uh, doesn't know the other person, know me, and and and, and it's not a yes person that's gonna call me on my shit. That's all you need. That's really 
really need really you just need one person like that if you don't believe in going to talk to like actual therapists or you we may not even have fucking insurance to go talk to somebody you just need one thorough person and ain't going bullshit with you and tell you how you need to be pivoting and moving and yo that's that's wrong or or feel even feel comfortable talking to oh jump in here real quick and then we're gonna close out the episode um i just want to say i did do uh marriage counseling therapy and she was really knowledgeable even though she didn't come from our background she knew shit you know what i mean that opened my eyes to shit like she really knew because she had that damn degree i don't know how she knew but uh, that's she a really different didn't know what everybody was else. going on huh i went to marriage counseling too they we had to do that before we actually got married and that shit for me was not a good experience i felt judged i felt i, I felt <laughs> like they was trying to not nah, real shit dog because what? it went I, I, like I felt like dog. I got into a back and forth. It, we, it was a man and a woman. It was a married couple, and they got and the and the woman kept getting spicy with me to the point where I was like, "Miss, you don't even know me." What? And that's my thing about that's my thing about having professional help. You you giving me every the advice you you can't you don't know me personally. You know what I'm saying? So the advice, you can't just give me advice off the fly of what you think every everybody's situation is different. You know what I'm saying? You just you I I I I go off of what Faith said. I feel like everybody need at least one person in their life that's going that to give it to them raw. You know what I'm saying? If you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. You know what I'm saying? If you're wrong, you're wrong, and I'm gonna tell you that. That's that's what motherfuckers need. And if you, you know, need somebody, it's sad that somebody, somebody to talk to, hit my DM if I don't answer. Hit Dan DM and Unk is always available. Yeah. All right, hold up. All I'm gonna say uh, is with them situations, like Face just said, it don't necessarily always gotta be somebody that is comes from your same background because they might have the same view of the world that you got. You might need somebody with a different perspective to give you a totally different way to look at shit, something that you might not have even thought of. Like Unk just said, she mm -hmm. wasn't from our background, but then she made me think about shit. You always need people who make you think. Uh, y'all, I appreciate y'all coming on. That's episode one thirty nine. I forgot to mention these two things. Episode 139, sponsored by Custom Hustle at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter, and at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. Go ahead, Facebook, last line. One last question to show how we all come from different backgrounds. Have you guys Wait, ever... Hold up. Hold that... Hold, hold up. Hold that question. Episode 141 will have that question to start off the show. Appreciate y'all hitting the button. We are out. I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.